Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. I'm so glad you're here. What do we got going on? Well, we're kind of in this crack up boom phase, right? We talked about it. What's pushing the markets higher? Well, it's the expansion of credit. It's going into more debt is what that really is. Now, how much debt are we in? We're in $35 trillion of debt in the United States. Now, guess what? Out of that $35 trillion, $9 trillion comes due within the next year, meaning they have to refinance it. You see, it was at this low price, but now they got to refinance it at this high price. We're paying a trillion dollars just on interest right now, but a year from now, we're going to be paying two trillion dollars because they have to refinance all the debt when it rolled over. You see, they weren't smart enough to sell long-term bonds. They wanted to save money and they sold two-year bonds, right? So now the two-year bonds are coming do, but not at 0%. They're coming to at 5%. So we have to refinance. We got to sell $9 trillion worth of bonds. Now it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Why? Why is it worse than that? Well, because we got a budget deficit of one and a half to $2 trillion. So figure add another $2 trillion to the $9 trillion that rolls over. That's $11 trillion. Somebody has to buy $11 trillion worth of bonds. But the rest of the world, they don't want to buy our bonds anymore. Why not, Tom? Mike? Why don't they want to buy our bonds anymore? Because we've weaponized the dollar. We've weaponized it. You buy our bonds, we might not pay you back. Look at Russia. You bought our, They bought our bonds. They're not buying anymore because we stole them, right? Look at, we cannot refinance this debt. $11 trillion. There's only one buyer. And me and you both know who that buyer is. It's the Federal Reserve. Does the Federal Reserve have money? No, what are they going to do? They're going to print it. They're going to print it. What's that going to do to inflation? It's going to shoot up, right? These numbers are insane. These numbers are disturbing. This is a very sick, very sick and demented is what this is. We cannot continue at this pace. A lot of people think we can. A lot of people think we can get to $100 trillion in debt. I don't see it that way. I think we're going to have maybe another two, three years left, and then this thing's going to explode on itself. That's just just my take, and I know it's not a positive take, but you might want to get some gold, might want to get some silver just to protect yourself, just in case I'm right. So let's get over to the real estate market. Okay, so we got existing home sales, right? Well, they fell for the third month in a row. Existing home sales fell for the third month in a row. But Mike, this is the selling season right now. Everybody's out there buying homes. Why are existing home sales falling? Well, they're falling because the buyers didn't come out during selling season. Now, granted, this is just volume, right? So the volume of sales went down during the prime selling season, which is even a little shocking to me. But the volume is like at a standstill. The real estate market's frozen over. Now, what this means is that prices will soon follow. You see, price Price always follows volume. You get that volume dropping, you're going to get the prices dropping. You see, here's what happened also. Here's what happened also. The housing inventory has jumped to the highest level it's been in the last two years. So inventory's gone up, but prices haven't come down yet. That doesn't make any sense, right? It's just frozen over. Nobody's buying. What's happening is days on the market. It's staying a little bit longer on the market. It was 18 days. Now it's 24 four days on the market. So it's taking longer to sell, right? Now, if you want to sell a property, well, you should, well, you should lower your price, get under the market, and then your property will sell, right? Okay, but here's the thing. What if you want to buy a property? What type of property should you look for? What I do when I'm looking for myself, I look for properties that are vacant. Vacant means the owner, they got a problem. Somebody's paying the uh, property taxes. Somebody's paying the mortgages. Somebody's paying the insurance. Somebody's paying debt without any income coming in and they're not even using the property. So I look for vacant properties that are for sale, but they're vacant, right? And I look for ones that have been on a month, maybe two months. If they've been on the market a long time, the owner starts to get kind of desperate. Now, you don't want to show he's desperate. You don't want to lower that price. 
what I do, I go in and offer them 20 to 30% below the market value. And you'd be surprised, about one out of five takes the offer. But you got to find the vacant house, the ones that have been vacant and on the market for over 60 days. Make five offers, I bet you get one accepted, offer 20 to 30% below the current market. That's just what I do, you do you, I'll do me. But anyways, what I see coming is a bloodbath. I see a bloodbath coming, not just in the stock market stock. Stock market could drop 90%. The commercial real estate's already in some areas has dropped 90%. But I see the bloodbath coming in the housing market. But Mike, nobody's going to drop their house price. Everything's selling. Everything's great. Look, at it's great until it's not so great, right? Houses, what they do? Went up 40%. 40% in the last five years. Okay, what also went up with that, though? Well, the property taxes, they went up 40%. What about insurance? Some areas insurance doubled. Some areas it tripled. See, the owners starting to get squeezed, right? But hey, the government, they got a plan. They got a plan. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, they're going to do second mortgages, all guaranteed by the government. Now, I always thought, this is confusing to me. Why do they want to get into the second mortgage market? The only thing I can come up with, the only thing I can come up with is they want your property. They want your property. When I was a young whippersnapper, what I would do is I would go out and buy second mortgages. I'd try to get them at a discount because a lot of people, especially if they weren't paying on you, see, those were the best kind. Some are not paying on your mortgage. You're going to sell that mortgage for 20 cents on the dollar just to get some money out of it. So I'd go in and I'd offer them 30 cents on the dollar. Let's say I would now own the second mortgage. Now they're delinquent on the second mortgage. They're not making their payment. What would I do? I would go and foreclose on the house and I would get all that equity. It was so exciting, right? And I think that's what the government's going to try to do. They're going to try to go after your house. They're going to try to extend you out. Let's give you that second mortgage. Let's get you some more debt. Let's give you some more inflation. Let's increase your insurance. Let's increase your property taxes. Oh, you can't make the second mortgage. Pay. We're going to come and take your house. What's the government going to do with them? Well, they might rent it back to you. That's what I would do. When I went and foreclosed on the house, I go, look it, I'm going to, I'm going to take your house and I'm going to be the owner and I'm going to let you live there. I'm going to let you live there for six months free if you sign off now and we don't have to go through the foreclosure process. You can wait for the foreclosure process and I'm going to kick you out. But if you sign away your rights, I'll let you stay free for six months. Okay, well, they always sign the way their rights, right? I think the government wants to get into the housing business of home ownership. Why do they want to do that? I don't know. Maybe for the newcomers. The newcomers are coming. They don't have anywhere to live. Maybe the government's going to put them in a house, right? But that's the only reason I can think that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae want to get into the second mortgage market is they want to steal the equity in your home. They see the equity. They see you can't refinance. They see you're strapped for cash. Let's give them a second mortgage. Oh, you can't pay the first. Now you definitely can't pay the second. Well, now we got the second. We got a right to come in and take your house legally. Isn't that weird, huh? Maybe the government wants to get into the housing business. This is just, I, this is just conspiracy theory. This is just what tall Mike thinks about at night when he's trying to go to sleep when I got all this stuff going through my mind. I think, why would they do this. And I think they want to steal your house. They want to get the equity in it. They want to go into the rental business. That's my take. I could be wrong. But you see, right now, people, they're stuck in their house. They're stuck, right? Now, when I bought my first house, it was a stepping stone to my second, to my third, to my fourth, and a bigger and bigger and better and better. And I moved on up. But people, they bought their first. And now they're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I, I, I can't move up. I'm stuck here. The house is too small. We've had two more kids. We need more room, but we can't move up because we're locked in at 2.8%. And there's 7% up here. We can't do it. And you know what? The old people like the boomers, right? The boomers, they got these McMansions. You know what? They're stuck in there. They can sell the McMansion, get a big pile of cash and downsize. But you know what? Their payment's going to be more than they're paying on the McMansion. So why do it? You see, they got the McMansion locked in at 2.8%. Let's say they want to downsize from a million dollar house to a $700,000 house. Their payment's going to be more. Why? Because that's at 7, 8% when their McMansion has a million dollar loan and that's at 2.8%. So what are they going to do? We're going to get Freddie 
and Fannie in there to give them a second mortgage so they have money for their retirement years so they can continue to live. But you see, people cannot trade. People cannot put their home onto the market. You see, now homes, they went up that 40% in five years. You really think your house went up 40%? Or let me ask you a question. Do you think the dollar went down by 40%? Because it's a coincidence. In the last five years, they printed 40% more money to the money supply. They added 40%. Your house went up 40%. Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating to me. Anyways, I'm telling you, it's not your house going up. It's the dollar going down and the dollar's in free fall. But Mike, I want the prices to come down in nominal terms. In nominal terms, Mike, I want the house to drop. They may. They're getting crushed right now in real terms. Look, inflation still running up here 10%. They'll tell you three and a half, but we're up here around 10%. And I'm telling you, houses have been flat for the last couple of years. So we're down 10, 20. The next year, we're going to be down 30. And then if we start to come down in nominal terms, it's going to get real ugly real fast. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. A lot of people are retired right now and they think they're making this money in the market. And a lot of people are. A lot of people making a lot of money in the stock market, right? Okay. So they, their money's going up and they're trying to keep up with the cost of inflation. But what if the market takes a downturn, right? What if it comes just 20%, let's call it. Anyone believes the market could come down 20%. It could do that by tomorrow. It could do that by the close today. You just don't know what's going to happen. But 20% is nothing, right? Okay, well, you throw in 10% inflation on that, and you've lost 30%, 30% of your purchasing power. I'm telling you, the stock market getting very dangerous right now, especially for older people, people who retired, people on fixed income, people that this is their only money. They have their whole life savings in there. And you know what they're doing? They're doing it on margin margin debt is at record highs. People take all their money and they buy two, three times as much as they can. And they're just rolling the dice, hoping this crack up boom continues. And so far, they've been winning when you roll the dice. You know what? Gambling is fun when you win. It's a lot of fun when you win. But when you start to lose, it gets really sad, right? And you start to worry. You start to worry, well, how am I going to make my house payment? Where's my food money going to come from? This is not going to end well. It's not going to end well for a lot of people. You see, there is a big problem out there. People gambling in the stock market. Now, the real gamblers, the real gamblers are the banks, the banksters, right? I mean, they're gambling your money. They've lost your money. We talked about that the last video. But what they do is they put it into these derivative bets. Do you realize there's a quadrillion of derivatives out there? What's a derivative, Tom? Mike? Well, it's just kind of like having a stock, right? And then you have the derivative, which is the option on the stock. And then you can even have a derivative on top of the derivative, a derivative of the option. Let's say you have a, uh, like the QQQs is the NASDAQ, right? A derivative would be the SQQQ, which is the derivative. That's the double sort uh, uh, NASDAQ, right? So then you can buy an option on the SQQQ and that'd be a derivative on a derivative. And they have derivatives on top of derivatives on top of derivatives, a quadrillion. Nobody knows how much that is. I don't even know how much that is. I have trouble figuring out how much a trillion dollars is. You see a trillion dollars, I don't know how far that would take you back. If you just went in seconds, it's way before the time Christ was born. I'll tell you that, just one trillion. We got 35 trillion in debt. What's a quadrillion? I don't know how much that that is. That is a lot of money, but my point is this is getting out of control, getting out of hand. It's going to blow up. It's going to implode on itself. Eventually, nobody knows the time, the place, or the hour, but it's coming. I, I promise you that. You don't have to take my word for it. Stay in the market. Go out and buy a house. Dave Ramsey, he says it's the best time to buy. Now, Tom, Mike, I don't agree with all that talk. That's just bad talk. You see, look at I love real estate. I made a lot of money in real estate. Still making a lot of money in real estate because real estate is a way to get rich. But is it a good time to buy right now? No, it's never been a worse time to buy than right now. There's going to be a bloodbath and it's coming. I guarantee you it's coming. If you're patient, you're going to get the rewards. If you're not patient, you're going to go out and buy. You're going to be the bag holder. That's just the way it's played out through history, right? Patience will pay off this time. I believe that. Yeah, this crack up boom still going on. I mean, you can jump in now if you want, but I do like Warren Buffett. Sit on that hundred billion dollars in cash and just wait for the deals to come. Same with the real estate market. I'm Tall Mike. You like this stuff? Give me a thumbs up. Punch that subscribe button. Get out there, everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye now.